Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video about how you can wire up and light these things here. These are LEDs. These are little five millimeter ones that I use in lots of different projects. Now I've just put together something for a Halloween display using flickering versions of this. So I thought while I had all the stuff out, let me make a very quick video because as you you probably have seen on lots of different places. If you have a single LED, you can actually connect it to a button cell and it will light up. And the really nice thing about LEDs is that they're incredibly energy efficient. They only need a really small amount of current. So putting them onto a little three volt button cell, you can make them light up and that's great. However, you can connect LEDs to bigger batteries. So we'll use this nine volt one in this example here, has a negative side and a positive side, and you can light up multiple LEDs in a big string, and you can have lots and lots of different strings. And that is incredibly useful. And in that radio control hobby, the things that we're connecting them to are usually two, three, four S batteries with completely different voltages. Now, the other thing you need to think about is that LEDs have a positive and a negative side. The negative side is always the shorter lead. And it also, if it's this kind of LED, has a flat spot on the actual piece itself. That's really handy because if you cut the leads off, then how do you know which is the shorter lead? That's the way to tell. And they are really, really good. They produce an incredible amount of light using a really small amount of electricity. So they are great for lots of different things and that's why they're pretty ubiquitous now in pretty much everything. Now we can't just connect an LED onto something like a nine volt battery. Again, as I said, if you've got a little button cell, you can kind of get away with it. But if your voltage is higher than two or three volts, so for example, a nine volt battery, you need one of these. This is a pack of resistors. Now the resistor itself is this little thing here. This is like a little uh, thing with two leads on. This little resistor resists the flow of electricity. Now don't worry, this sounds really complicated, but I promise you it isn't. If you stick with it, you'll figure it all out. The, this is there to make sure that the full voltage of the battery doesn't go across the LED and blow it up. Because if you've ever tried to connect one of these LEDs to a nine volt battery, you'll have seen it light briefly and then it never lights again. And that's because it needs only a couple of volts in order to work. Now to figure out which resistor you need to actually put uh, with your LED for the battery voltage that you're using, it's really simple. It's using something called Ohm's law, which if you're an electrical engineer, is something you will be very familiar with because Ohm's law is used all the time. And that is the fact that voltage equals the current I times the resistance, or to figure out the resistance that you need, all you need to do is figure out what the voltage drop over the resistor needs to be and the current that's flowing through it. Again, that sounds incredibly complicated, but I promise you it isn't. Stay with it. We'll actually put one, two, and three LEDs on this battery, and I'll kind of illustrate the principle. So the first thing we'll do, let's light this LED using this nine volt battery. Now, again, this nine volt battery has a positive and negative side. We need to make sure that the negative side of the LED, which is the shorter lead, goes onto the negative side of the battery. So I'm just gonna bend the positive side out of the way. But what value of resistor do we need in order to make this LED to, to light? Well, the way that I use it is that I always assume, unless I can find specific specific specifications for the LED, try saying that three times fast, is that I always assume the LED needs about 1.8 volts. 1.8 to 2 volts is pretty typical. If you find the specs for the LEDs you're using, you're looking at something called VF or voltage forward. VF is usually going to be around that range. It changes for slightly different colors, but if you work on 1.8 volts per LED, then you probably won't go too far wrong. The other thing is that 20 milliamps or 0 0.02 of an amp, teeny weeny bit, is all you need to light this LED. So that means that we now know that this needs 1.8 volts, but we've got a nine volt battery. That means then we need to get rid of 7.2 volts via this resistor. We know 
that we need 20 milliamps. So if we divide 7.2 volts, which is the voltage we need to drop across here, by the current that we need to flow through it, which is the 0.02 amps or 20 milliamps, we end up with a 360 ohm resistor, which is exactly what this is. So I'm going to uh, just wind this around the positive lead. Obviously you'd use wires and stuff, you're gonna do it for real. So if I now plug this onto the battery, again, make sure that the negative or the cathode of the LED is on the negative side of the battery, positive is on the positive side. We'll see it light up and there it is lighting up and it's absolutely happy. Now that, that's great and that's the hardest bit of the whole video done. It, now we've got that done, what about if we want to have more than one LED lighting up? Because the cool thing is, of course, is that we've got 9 volts to play with here and we only need 1.8 volts for each of these LEDs. So let's try that with two. And again, you can use whatever voltage you want for the, for the battery. Uh, just see what's on there because you can use exactly the same equation. So this time what we'll do is let's use two different colours. We use a red one and a green one and we need to figure out the value of this resistor. So this time we have two LEDs each of which is going to need 1.8 volts but crucially we still need the same amount of current only that little bit that 20 milliamps because it's going to flow around the circuit through both the LEDs so it will actually light both of them. So because of that we know that we don't need to drop 1.8 volts because we've got two of them. It's actually, this, these guys are going to need 3.6 volts together. So if we take away the 3.6 volts that these need away from the nine volts that the battery is gonna supply, we know that we need to drop 5.4 volts across this little resistor. We also know it's gonna be 20 milliamps flowing through it. That means that it's a 270 ohm resistor that we need and that's what we have here. So again, the way we're gonna connect it, we're going to um, push the positive lead out the way. So that's negative lead. We'll do the same on here. We'll push the longer positive lead out the way. And what I'll do is I'll connect the negative lead of one LED to the positive lead of the other because we're connecting them in series. Just try and do this without having to grab any tools. There we go. And then what we'll do is on the positive lead, we'll attach our little resistor again. Now, obviously if you're installing this, this will all be connected by wires and solder and whatnot, but there we have our little circuit. So we have the two LEDs connected and we have our resistor. And now again, negative connection on the LED to the negative part of the battery. And these should, again, light up. And there they do, they are. Fantastic, okay, so that's two LEDs. For the last one here, let's go mad. Let's actually do three LEDs. Let me grab some more from the kit. What we'll do is we'll put these together now. Guess what? Each of these LEDs, we're going to uh, assume, again, you can actually check the specs and look for the VF or V forward, uh, that each of these needs 1.8 volts. So rather than have 1.8 volts that we need for each of them, because the three, it's 1.8 plus 1.8 plus 1.8, that's 5.4 volts are needed for the LEDs. So we need to drop the rest of that nine volts over the resistor. So if we have nine volts, minus the 5.4 that we need for the LEDs. That means that this resistor needs to drop 3.6 volts. Again, we know it's 20 amp, 20 milliamps, because it's gonna flow through each of these LEDs in a circuit. So we can actually put this together again. So if we divide the 3.6 volts that this resistor needs to drop with the current that we need to go through the circuit, which is 20 milliamps, we get 180 ohms and that's what this resistor is. So again, what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, just kick out the positive leads, just helps me keep track of them. 
and to prove this does work and then what we'll do is we will twist the negative lead to the positive lead So there's our three LEDs connected. We'll put the resistor, I always put it in, and convention is you always put the resistor on the positive lead. So there he is. So there's our resistor. There's our three LEDs together. Make sure things aren't touching that aren't supposed to be, because usually breadboards and things are good for stuff like this. We're gonna put it on, again, negative side of the LED, the cathode onto the negative terminal on the battery. Let's see if these light up. Yep, there we go. We have the three different colors. So that is how you connect different LEDs together. You can have single LEDs, you can have as many as you can kind of get away with, with the battery voltage that you have. Obviously you have a higher battery voltage, you can put them in, uh, you can put more LEDs on it but you could have multiple of these side by side. So I can make another one of these and put them on and have six lights. Another one would give me nine lights. Another set of three would give me 12 lights. And that's the way that you can add an awful lot of little LEDs from one single battery. So hopefully that helps. Uh, you don't need to be an expert on this stuff in order to get simple LEDs to light up. All you need to do is remember Ohm's law, which is the resistance is the voltage that you need to drop over the little resistor. You also then need to know the current that you need, which I would always just use 20 milliamps as your current, uh, allow for 1.8 volts for each of your LEDs, unless they're really specialized ones. And then you can figure out the value of the resistor, put them together like this, and you'll have them lighting up. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.